Uh, this session is um, called Quick and Easy Storyboard Images Using Visual Electric. Uh, my name is Carolina DeBartolo. I am a mentor at Design Lab, and I've been a creative director designer for many decades. <laughs> um, you can find me on social media at Caro DeBartolo, pretty much every, every you know, all of the different platforms. Uh, you can look for me on there if you're looking for me. A um, couple of uh, guidelines for the session. Please stay on mute unless um, otherwise requested. Uh, your questions are welcome. Please use the chat. I know there's a Q&A function in Zoom, but we're just going to do everything in the chat. If you haven't already introduced yourself in the chat to say where you're coming from today, where you're joining us from today, I'd love to know. So go ahead and uh, post into the chat. Someone's from Marin. Oh, wow. I'm in Marin, too. Uh, yeah, Bay Area. All right. I'm in Sausalito. Um, and then if we have time, we'll do a QA and a again uh, in the chat. Um, and then uh, last but not least, this is a safe space. So please be mindful and respectful of other, uh, other people's opinions. So all right, great. Pittsburgh, that's my hometown. All right. Puerto Rico. Good. All right, we got a lot of people from a lot of places. Amazing. Okay, so um, I'll move along to um, a little intro to the tool I'm gonna show you today, which is called Visual Electric. It's pretty new. I think it just came out in December and uh, you can find it at visualelectric.com. It's another AI image generation tool. However, this one was really um, uh, designed with designers in mind, right? Um, and so it's very visual and um, it has some uh, qualities that make it very similar to using Figma, which is probably familiar to most of you guys that are in this um, session because you're probably design lab students or design lab related people. So um, this is a little screenshot of a, a, a canvas that I was working on to do some um, Japanese uh, landscape paintings. And then today we're going to do some storyboard uh, imaging with them because, you know, one of the great things about um, these AI tools is that they can actually do a pretty good job at things that for designers sometimes are a little bit um, busy work. <laughs> uh, not every designer is good at, you know, illustrating a little cartoon or a little uh, simple drawing of something. And I see a lot of people doing them as um, uh, stick figure drawings, which is fine. But if you wanted something that was a little bit more sophisticated than that, or, you know, you might even be able to use AI to make stick figure drawings and so you can save yourself that step as well. Um, you could definitely use Visual Electric. Visual Electric has um, inside of it a bunch of models that have been trained. They call them moods. And so a model is just um, a style, right? So um, you can see that I, I tried a bunch of them. They don't have... Um, I, as far as I know, they don't have ways to uh, add a little typography. So I actually had to draw all these <laughs> by hand with a little drawing tool. So there's a Rhizo uh, model, an ink, ink etch, a head cut one, a charcoal. I'll show you some of these today. Craft paper, I'll show this a little larger when we get over to Visual Electric, half tone pixel. So there's 16 different models that I found in Visual Electric that I think, you know, you could probably use any of those for a storyboard image. And if you wanted to do a storyboard image as a complete, you know, realistic photograph, that's probably fine too, if you wanted to do that. But most of the time for storyboards, we try to use something that's kind of more like a sketch. Um, and there even is a, um, a mood in Visual Electric called storyboard. So that one over there is called storyboard. So I'll show you some of these and then we can test it out with some of your ideas. This one, the prompt that I used was the same for each and every one of these outputs. So um, I used, for example, the stipple model and I got these, I've said a woman walking into a cat cafe um, and it gave me these four images. And then I used the same um, prompt, a woman walking into a cat cafe and I used the storyboard um, model. So you can see that it comes out with sort of different images and then it's just the AI just kind of generates some, some other um, arrangement of a woman walking into a cafe, cat cafe. Um, so, Couple of things um, with regards to using Visual Electric and prompting. A couple of best practices, my opinion. Um, you may find <laughs> you may find other information out there on the web, and you know there's probably other people doing this. I've been using text image uh, AI uh, image making for about a year and a half now. Um, so, um, and I mainly use it to make artwork, but um, it becomes very familiar, you know, after you use it for a little while. For a little while. So for me, um, what seems to work the best is that you keep it pretty simple and be very specific with your prompts. 
Um, you can, of course, put anything in there. You could put periods and commas in there. You could put poetry in there um, and just give it a prompt and see what happens. <laughs> you know, you can misspell things and sometimes you get like cool results. Oh, wow, <laughs> look what happened. <laughs> um, so, but for the most part, uh, just keeping keeping your prompt fairly simple and straightforward and being pretty specific about what you want. So if you want a woman, don't say a student, say a female student, for example. You know, so if you if you just say a student, then the biases of the AI will sort of take over and you'll get, you know, a man. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then uh, for images with people in them, if also you're looking for racial diversity, then you can just go ahead and add the words to your prompt racially diverse. You know, so you just put a comma racially diverse and you'll get a little bit better representation, hopefully, um, of what you're looking for. If not, then be specific, you know, and say what skin color you want and what hair color you want, and what hairstyle you want or whatever. So the more specific you are, the more likely you'll get exactly what you're looking for. And then you can specify in visual electric uh, colors that you want, um, uh, aspect ratio for the images. So you can have a tall skinny image or a wide format image um, or a square image. So you can uh, just decide what you like. And then in Visual Electric, there's a pretty cool little thing that's uh, what to exclude. So I'll show you that. That has an extra um, setting in there that you can tell it what to make sure it doesn't do. <laughs> um, and then also what mood what model um, you want it to use. So you have to specify those things. If you don't, it's okay. You'll get images that you don't need, and then you can just throw them away. Or you can, you know, like I say, sometimes there's happy accidents with this AI stuff because it's all a little bit of a, you know, a serendipitous um, interaction. And then... As I mentioned, uh, or as I mentioned in previous sessions, uh, this is also a process. So, you know, you're going to have to iterate. You're not going to get the right thing, that, probably not going to get the right thing the first time you try, right? So just give it a shot. AI image generation is still part of your design process. You'll try it. If you won't, it won't work and you'll have to try it again. And the more you try it, the more likely you're going to be able to do it well, you know, quicker. Um, so enjoy the serendipity of the AI and kind of have fun. I, I find these these tools super fun. You know, I find my, you know, interacting with, um, using my natural intelligence to interact with the artificial intelligence has been just really satisfying to me. And I, I do it for many hours every day. <laughs> so I really like it. All right. And then for those of you who have attended today, I have a little gift for you, uh, courtesy of Visual Electric. Um, they're giving everybody that's attending the session today a discount code. Um, just um, subscribe and type in Design Lab in all caps as your coupon code at the in the checkout, and you'll get twenty dollars off a monthly subscription. It will auto renew and charge you for a month's subscription the following month. So if you do not want that to happen, then be sure to subscribe. Get your free month and then immediately unsubscribe so it doesn't reach, it doesn't charge you. So just be careful about that. But that is a courtesy of Design Lab for everybody that attends today. And then, yes, you're welcome. You can thank Design, you can thank Visual Electric <laughs> uh, and Design Lab for hosting the event. Um, actually, I think I might skip that slide. I'll go back to it. Um, the Design, Design Lab is the sponsor of this event. Um, and if you're not familiar, Design Lab is an online educational organization focused on helping new and established designers build their careers in digital design. So if you're interested in taking your design to the career to the next level, reach out to the admissions team at admissions at designlab.com. All right, so let's go over here to uh, the Visual Electric homepage. Um, usually when you arrive here, you get to this um, uh, inspirational page of images that have been uh, generated using Visual Electric. And if you hover over, you can see what prompt they used and what mood they used to get each image. So if you see anything that you're you're aiming for here, you can get a start by starting with one of those images. And then these are the different moods. So there's a, a variety of moods for photography, a variety of moods for fine art, and a variety of moods for illustration. And then also they have these moods for crafts. So you can see this one is kind of like a three-dimensional paper cutout. And then there's digital ones, which are like pixelated images and stuff like that. So if you need inspiration, you can um, go to that tab. I'm gonna go over here to canvases. You can see I've already made, uh, this tool's pretty new, so I don't have that many canvases started, but I have a few. And I will show you this one which is the one I was uh, making for you guys to show you the different uh, kinds of moods that 
might use for story wars. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see them a little clear, clearly, more clearly, hopefully. So this one's called Rizo. There's the ink sketch, kind of nice. Head cut is like that style of illustration you get in the Wall Street Journal. And there's charcoal drawings. Craft paper gives you this kind of brown paper background. There's a half tone, so that's kind of like the Roy Lichtenstein style. Lino cuts. Bauhaus just seemed like a clean, clear illustration style there. I lost a bit. <clears throat> and then um, pixelated. Oh, somebody's not on mute. If you could stay on mute, that'd be great. Um, and then here's pixel. This one's called graphic outline. Also kind of a clean, clear uh, style. Maybe could be good for storyboards. There's one called hand drawn. And then I love stipple. So pretty uh, stippling. And then this one's called Storyboard. And this one's called Vector. And then here's one that was called Lino Cut. That's kind of nice. And then there's a screen print one. And um, if I did like any of these images and I needed them to be a little bit larger, I can click on any of them. Uh, by the way, if I click on any of these images, you can also see that each one of them has the same prompt. So I've used the same prompt to generate everything. And it kind of gives me um, um, a refresher of what each image, the prompt was for each image, and then also which model I used for each image and which um, aspect ratio each image has been made with. So if, for example, I decided that I really liked um, one of these, let's see, yeah, I do like the stipple style. Here's one, let's see what happens if I make it a little bit larger. I'll do what's called a detailed upscale. And I'll make it two times larger. That's OK. I'm going to turn the creativity down because I actually like the way this image looks already. If I turned it way up, it would actually also alter the image. So I don't necessarily want to alter it so much. I mainly just want to get a larger version of this. I'll turn the creativity down and just click this button that allows it to remake. And it kind of just picks a, picks a spot on the canvas to give you a new one at twice as large. And maybe we can pick a couple other ones too, and large as well. Any preferences? Anybody like any other ones that look like a cat cafe? day? Here, how about this one? This one could be good. Do a detailed upscale of this one. Let's see what I get. And you can see how this is kind of like an infinite scroll canvas. And I can just zoom in and zoom out of it to see what I have here. So it's completely graphical. So unlike if you um, <laughs> if you have used Midjourney or if you were at the Midjourney session, it's pretty different from what you have to do with Midjourney. So this one is, like I say, it's more oriented towards designers. OK, it'd be great to see how to create a sequence of sketches that all tell a story, not just standalone images. Right. So um, what I need is somebody to help me uh, with prompts for a sequence that you, maybe you've been struggling with. So here's um, the ones that I was just enlarging. Zoom in a little bit bigger. You can also use the plus tool, but I notice it, it opens up my browser too. This is kind of a nice little drawing. So if I had this one and then um, I wanted to use, let's see, I'll use Stipple Link and I'll use the five by four format. And I'll make another image. So um, a woman uh, looking on her phone for a cat cafe. Hmm. Place to visit. I just need her to be looking on her phone. A woman. I would say a close up. Let's see. Let's see what happens if I do something like that. And instead of photography, I'll use, I think it's under illustration, where's my stipple, stipple link model. Four by five, I think this was the other way, five by four. Uh, let's see if I can get some images out of that. 
So maybe this is what would happen beforehand. She was, she'd be looking on her phone for a place to go and then she would find the address and she'd show up, for example. <laughs> maybe I have to tell it it's a cell phone. Oh, it's getting closer. Maybe this one, something like this, maybe. Let's see, also detailed upscale two times. This one also, I noticed that this one has a little bit of like a, a tint to it, and then this one looks pretty black and white. But of course, I can also download these images and just um, make adjustments to them as needed, um, changing them to black and white. Even in iPhoto, you could change it to black and white, for example. So we'll see how these look as far as um, whether or not they, they seem like they could go together, um, if that's helpful, Joel. <laughs> um what else can i show you anybody have any um and then we can try this one um we could do this one we'll change from stippling this one is uh, is this risograph okay yeah this is risograph let's see i think riso might be under this illustration style as well did i miss it Mm, not sure where it is. Oh, maybe it's under. Oh, yeah, it's under crafts. Actually, they it would be nice if they had all the um, they had a, a master tab where you could just um see all the all the moods in one long list. But you have to figure out which category it's under. <laughs> Sometimes that's that's harder. So, um, let's see here. Other questions. Is there a way to make it so the character would stay the same? The way you would need to do that, um, and once again, I mean, considering that, you know, people typically, you know, they draw like stick figures for these storyboard images. I don't think it's terribly important that it's exactly the same character from place to place, but the way you could do it would be to um, use this, you know, kind of get this head, like separate this head out, you know, remove the background, separate the head. And then you can use in this program, you can use the collage tool. So, for example, if I was to, let's see, remove background, did I do it? Did it do it already? Come on, maybe it can't do it with a drawing, is that true? Not sure. It doesn't, maybe it doesn't allow me to remove the background or something like that. But if you were to, um, if you could get, oh, there it's, it's doing it. it. It removed the background on that one. I probably should have made a copy. And so I could take this and I could, you know, I think I can make it smaller, can I? Yes, I can make it smaller. And I can try, for example. <laughs> She's, our head's not quite turned the right way or in the right position, but I could try to get this head, for example, onto here, get it the right size. And you can say collage. So now I have to select both items and then I can say collage. Creativity, composition, Mm, I'll do the defaults for now, but I'm going to also do, I just want it to be black and white and gray. Um, done. And I don't want it to be photography. I want it to be, that was under illustration. I want it to be my stipple link style, stipple link. And I think I better give it a little bit more creativity and see what happens. <laughs> just to see if it can turn that head around. But that's the way you could get the same character. But like I say, considering that a lot of people are just using um, stick figures, these are still pretty good, you know, as long as it's uh, not a completely different character, you know, um, I think you're kind of, you're pretty safe with it. So, and then once again, you could be very specific. You could say, okay, I'd like a tall, thin woman with long hair, you know, um, and then hopefully you would get the tall, thin woman with long hair in every image. Let's see what other questions we have here. Um, so that the character or the settings stay the same. Like I say, the way you would do that is try to do a collage and see what would happen. Um, have you tried asking for no shading? I think what you would do if you want no shading is once again, you can choose the colors that you want. So you can just, you can put it in your prompt also. You can just say, you know, black and white or, and then you can also choose the colors as I showed. And then you can also do an exclude. So say for example, 
by the way, this one, it's generating for me the prompt, even though I didn't give it a prompt here, I did a collage, it's generating a prompt here. So if I don't like something about this prompt, then I can change that prompt and then I can adjust this image, you know, so I can remix this image and make something different. So let's see here. So that was my collage. This one, she doesn't, she looks fairly, you know, at least the head doesn't look like it's whacked out from the body. This one looks probably the best of all of them. It doesn't look like a cafe anymore though. Um, Cause actually you can see all the prompts says in a cozy home interior. So maybe if I change it to say in a cat cafe. I don't know if the AI knows <laughs> what a cat cafe is. <laughs> Well, we can give it a shot. Oops, and I put the wrong, it's, it changed formats. I want to do it, landscape formats, Let's try again. Um, so you get the idea though, it, it, again, it takes a little bit of iteration, but you can, you know, try to get the same um, kind of um, face image with each, um, in each image, but I don't think it's that big of a problem if it's, if it's um, a little bit different of a character in each image. Let's see, what else? And then asking for no shading. Oh yeah, so that would be like, like I mentioned, if you did a, um, for example, let's make sure I have no images selected. And then I can use exclude, for example, and I can say, you know, I don't, I wanna exclude color shading. I don't know, possibly. I'll just say I want black and gray done. See what happens. So we'll, we'll see what those look like in a minute. Here's the risograph ones looking at our phone. So. And yeah, this one I didn't say black and white in the prompt, and so I ended up getting um, color ones. But I could redo this one, risograph. I could say colors. I only want black and gray and white. How many colors? It doesn't allow me. It only allows me to pick two colors in here, I guess. Five by four, risograph. And then I can try again and see if it'll give me only black and whites in that one. So, yeah. Kind of interesting. <laughs> this is what they think a cat cafe is over here. Here's a nice cat cafe. There's cats all over the shelves. Plus, food and drink. <laughs> it's kind of cute. So let's see what other questions I have here because we're almost out of time. Let's see. Have we tried asking for shading? Same, same. Can you see we're on a style and aesthetic and have it continue? Like I say, I would use a mood and just have that continue and like try to get your prompt very specific about what you're looking for and see if you can get something that's pretty similar from image to image. Can I bring my own reference image to tell you I make the image? Yeah, you can. So I can take any image from my desktop and I don't know if I have an image on my desktop that I can bring in. I don't have an image like this, but say for example, I took this image and I downloaded it. And then I went over here and I started a new canvas. And then I could bring, I could just drag that image onto this canvas and say, okay, now I'm gonna start from this image. And if I had a series of images, I can select all those images and then I can create a mood from those images it'll show me what it'll it'll make a little miniature mood of my own it kind of you know from that one image it's starting to make a list of what the the mood is like and what it excludes right it excludes color and things like that so and it even give it you know just used ai to kind of make a name for it but you can change the name on your own and you can anything it, it puts in these boxes you can tell it you know, I don't want those things. You can adjust or you can add, subtract, edit, add, edit, delete <laughs> from any of those. Does that make sense? So yeah, this tool is pretty powerful. It has a lot of cool features. Um, let's see here. I'm going to go back to uh, this one. And let's see what else we have. Primary differences between this platform and MidJourney. Um, well, as you can see, I mean, it's pretty... This one is pretty different in so far as that it's much more visual and you're kind of just, you know, playing with images. You're not writing uh, um, commands. <laughs> Although Midjourney, if you have already made, I think up to uh, at least a thousand images on Midjourney, they now have their alpha version. And so you can use it on your desktop and in your uh, web browser now. So 
it becomes a little bit more <laughs> of a UI, but it's still a lot of controls, whereas this one's a little bit more visual in my opinion. Let's see, um, but they, they're both using AI. Midjourney has trained its own kind of Midjourney models, as far as I can tell. This one has its own uh, moods that are also models, and so it's a little different. This one uses Stable Diffuse, built on top of Stable Diffusion, as far as I know. Let's see, I'm curious how many platforms you pay, you play for. What's in the quiver? I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, how many platforms I pay for? I don't know. I don't know the number. I, um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I wonder if there's a way to get five fingers on each hand consistently. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, in in the case of these, you know, a lot of times cartoon images only have three anyway. So um, yeah, <laughs> you 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 can you know you can you can make subtle adjustments. There's a thing in here that is touch up. So on touch up, you can kind of you know select an area. This one seemed like maybe the the. Um, hand was kind of okay, but for example, if I didn't like that, I can tell it, you know, give me, give me some other alternatives for that section of that image, you know? So like I say, there's quite a lot of things you can do with this. You know, if you've used Midjourney, then it's kind of like um, uh, revising a section, you know, do variations on a section. So um, is there a maximum for the number of images you create collage remix? Um, I don't think so. I think you can have as many canvases and as many images as you want for your monthly subscription, as far as I know. Um, if you want to create a series of illustrations of the same style for a blog post, am I able to do that with your platform? It's not my platform, by the way. <laughs> this is just Visual Electric. I'm just, I'm just a user. Um, I mean, each picture has a different prompts and the represents different content, but they need to be, yeah, 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 just use the moods, just use the moods or create a mood and then make them all in that same mood. That's exactly what this tool is great for. Um, is the default always for images? Yes, except for when you upscale and it just gives you the one. Um, you can do more just by pressing the give me four more <laughs> button. <laughs> so yeah, you can do as many as you want with the same prompt and the same specs, you know, just keep pressing the same button. Um, you'll get more images. Um, can you put in custom colors if you want it to match? No, you can. Only, right now, you can only use those kind of general um, color palettes that it gives you. But you could put custom colors in your prompt. You know, so you can say a light teal with a you know a lavender and be more specific and see if you, that ends up uh, working for you. But it is good to pick those uh, color palettes out of there because it just it sort of just generally gives you those colors. Um, I'm not sure which one you love, Olivia, but maybe uh, I'm not sure which one we showed at that point, but let's see. So I wish I could draw like this. <laughs> now you can. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you guys realize, but you know, when cameras first were invented, they used to call the photography, they used to call it light drawings, right? So they, they, and people are just like with AI, they thought, oh, you know, you didn't draw it, the light drew it, right? It's, it's cheating or something. So it's not cheating. You know, this is just another tool. It happens to be the case that, you know, this is where we're at with the, with technology these days. So can you customize the colors? I read that one already. Can you customize the colors to match your brand? No, I answered that already. You have to just use the general color palette that they have for, for now, but you can customize them in your prompt. Color ones look like SAS marketing images, turnkey. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't like that, change your prompt. You know, get a better prompt. <laughs> um, love the touch up feature. Touch up is dope. I see the version allows up to 40 images per day, but are there any other advantages of the paid version? Mm, I don't know. Uh, I wonder if you added the palette as a reference image. Not sure what that means. Amanda, if you want to rephrase. I didn't add it. When I first made all these images over here, I didn't add anything. I just added a prompt, if that's what you're asking. If the colors would. Oh, yeah, that's true. If you if you add, if you create your own mood uh, with images that are in the color palette of your brand, then it will learn that color palette. Yes, it should. That should work. So. But yeah. T try it out, you guys. See how you like it. You have a free month to uh, run some tests and see, see what you like. Colors, not color. Show me your results. Uh, find me on social or something and um, show me what you're up to because I'd love to see uh, people's results. And I'm sure Visual Electric would be happy to see what you guys are up to as well. Thank you so much for coming today.